For many folks in Pennsylvania, the opening weekend of trout has always been more than just a weekend to catch fish. It's a weekend to unwind and catch up with family and friends, and trout fishing is a perfect excuse we use for that opportunity. We all grew up in the Keystone State, a state rich in trout fishing tradition, and part of that tradition for many of us is heading to trout camp. If you've been lucky enough to be part of a camp, then you most likely understand what this tradition feels like in the history it holds. Our story is a life full of trips to the northern Pennsylvania mountains that stretches back several generations and the ultimate goal to us is to see this tradition survive. This video starts off with a few clips of that next generation learning the perfect excuse that will continue to pull future generations to what we know as the opening weekend of trout in God's country. Life is always better on a trout stream. Try to get it over just a risky part of it. All right, Owen. And then just drop them back in. Put them back in head first and there you go. Nice fish, Owen. There you go. Because if you pull it up, then you're keeping your fly off the, off the bottom. Ooh. Well, you can hey, you hey, can hey. see these fish hitting. This is a great leader. This is one of our five foot indicator leaders. And if you notice, Owen does not have a float. He's using this as a strike indicator. You know, that's good. He's learning without an indicator in this kind of water. That's right. what. You... That's tough. Here. Another one. There you go. Oh, <laughs> that's off. great. Pick so that up. He broke off. here's a quick trip Here, trick. Oh, and when you hook the fish, turn your rod upstream, and then the fish has to yeah, come upstream. It's not that tight. He wasn't holding the line. It was a big fish. That was, I thought it was Here, fill his drag. You think it's good, Ben? I don't think that's too tight, do you? No, that should, that should be good. Have been fine. So, like, the only thing I do different is gain control the fish, turn your rod upstream. Turn your rod upstream. Turn your rod, then the fish will, it'll play nice then. So, we, we just went steelhead fishing, yeah. and we were teaching them to pull them sideways because you couldn't fight them in that current. Oh, bring you, them out of the current to right, the, you yeah. can't pull a steelhead up through the current. Yep. So, we were turning, and that's... Bringing them into the dead water. Right. Yep. That's what So, here you really don't have any no. true dead water. No. You, you just and turn these them. fish aren't big to where you're fighting them that hard. Oh, so you big can, fish. That was a big fish. That was a color to see Yeah, sometimes. I bet. That's a good Sometimes day. that happens, but it definitely gets a smile out of you. Oh, yeah. Opening day of trout, right. 2024. Out on the water. Big Shrive is working with Owen. And Tiger Mike is down the stream with Brody. And it's great to see the kids getting into some fish. Oh, oh you got them. Jesus. How about that? Did you see there? I right, thought easy, you were going to have easy, a double. Easy. Remember the famous steelhead, get him in the net. <laughs> I mean, you can't beat this. Uh -uh. This, this is what it's about right here. And see, they're laying right there. Yeah, yeah, when you said that, yeah. I mean, he I wasn't was even looking, was he? Uh -uh. I was turning around. You were turning to walk out. That's that swing it almost like a wet fly at that point. You don't even realize it. Right. Over the net, over the net. And then hold him way out towards the back. All right. <laughs> and I give him the whole two, three chuckle. Wait. Look at that. We changed. Oh, the flip button, Owen. Whoa. <laughs> what you... Got him right at the boot. Turn, Turn him upstream. Rod. Turn your rod upstream. There you go. You got control of him. Right over here. This is your rod. This is your rod. Up Let's now. see what he's getting these fish on because Owen's putting on a little clinic here. That is the Clown Fart Y2K and he's been hooking them on the Sulphur Double Trouble as well, size 10. How are you? This morning is all about the kids and we're with Owen. Big Shry's helping him out, Brent's helping him out, I'm giving him a little bit of assistance and he's going to turn into quite the fly fisherman. Hold that bugger up there, Owen. Another nice one. All right, lunchtime at camp. Guys did well. These boys caught some fish on the fly rod. Brent's cooking. Guys are sitting around the campfire. See the streams in the background. This is what it's all about, right yeah, here. I wish I had a beer. <laughs> There's Tiger Mike, chilling. I'm, I'm having withdrawals for that annual beer. 
One a year. One year, uh, one year ago today, I had my last beer. So I've been dry. I've been dry and been good all this year. But now I, I, I'm breaking. I can feel it. I'm breaking. I'm going to have a beer. Well, you let me know when you're ready for it all. I'm ready. And it's because of you I'm going to have a beer. And if I turn into an alcoholic, it won't be your fault. It's not. No, it's not my <laughs> it won't fault. It's your fault for making me drink this beer. Get me started. All right. Let me go get you that before you change your mind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this beer will knock the piss out of you. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like it's been on the ground a couple times. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it fell days. over. Well, enjoy your annual oh, drink. All right, Ben. Thank you so much. Oh, they're not in there. Must be in camp. You got the food in here. Yes, sir. I figured everybody can just build their own burger. Build your own burger at camp. Ooh, man. Mac and cheese, hot dogs, burgers, onions, mushrooms for the burgers, Swiss cheese. What's in the crock pot? cheese. That's for dinner. Okay. Cheesy hash brown potatoes. Gonna go with the pork steaks on the fire. Brent always takes care of us. The camp cook, the camp cleaner. You're like the camp parent the camp for us. camp caretaker. You are the camp caretaker. <laughs> You want me to make sure it's talking to Mike? This man here, eight years ago, introduced me to a fly. And he started me on my very, very first trout fishing ex exhibition. Nice. Which fly? The Y2K. Y2K, yeah, because I wanted you to catch fish. And that's what we started on. And and ever since that, that man's cost me maybe $3,000. <laughs> <laughs> you are one of our number one customers. <laughs> you catch more trees than fish, though. That's right. You said American Tiger Mike? Yes, sir. Yeah, please. That's what I'm telling you, man. He's my hero. I got your plate here, bud. Oh, thank you. Ooh, man, you're taking care of this guy. Man, that looks good. Fresh out of place, my old lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't film. <laughs> yeah, you're in trouble. He's just got caught now. <laughs> oh, look at, you better get them onions on there. Following them high, big shrub. According to Brent, the hot dogs are all deer. Mm -hmm. All venison. And burgers, venison. <laughs> Iron Mike's here. You guys have your boots on. We can get them on. Had faces from there. What are you up to? How you been, buddy? How you been? Oh, good, 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 good. Good. Did you guys eat? We ate. Yeah. Go ahead and eat. There's lunch. There's food up here. Hot dogs. Oh, I brought mm. some sandwiches. I yeah. You wouldn't need a sheets, and there were four guys down there in town. Fishing below the town. In town. Yeah. But really? they said they only caught one, one fish. We bought we're, the, we're the bridge. You get out and watch those guys. The water's way up. Way, I mean, it's they must 30 yards the up bridge. over the bank, up to the little road water. Well, lunch was awesome, Big Shrive. We just powered down some food. Good food. Had the uh, venison, hot dogs, and burgers. I think everybody had a good meal. And then the morning was incredible. We decided to just put our rods off to the side and help introduce the kids to some fly fishing. But now, Iron Mike's at camp, and the big tribe, Iron Mike and I, we're headed out to get some wild fish. Second part of our day, opening weekend, 2024. Come on, if you were a grizzly bear, you would have crawled over that. Okay, we're back out on the water. Big tribe is gonna be up first. Iron Mike's coming up through. And we're gonna see if we can get some good late afternoon, early evening fish. All right, let's do it. All right, Big Shrive. We'll start her off. Let's see what you can get out of this little spot. Beautiful little run coming down through. <laughs> oh my goodness. You start off with probably what's gonna be the dinker of the day. Wait till you see this thing. <laughs> That's what we came for. Mm. It's probably the prettiest. Let me go down across that pretty little car mark brookie. Go ahead and put them down in. What'd you get them on, Big Shrive? I got them on a barbless pheasant tail. Probably half as big as he was. Mm. 
Nice hook up there, Iron Mike. A little bit bigger of a brookie. <laughs> Not much bigger. Let's go take a look at them. Let's watch my rod right there. That one is on the white. Big old size tenor. Big size 10 white double trouble. And that's two fish that quick. All we right, came Andy. over to do some wild and native trout fishing and the creeks are up. So we went to the top end of a smaller stream and it's working. Uh, Pull your rod down, Mike. Oh. You got him. <laughs> We're into the oh, dinks. We are into the dinksters. Let me stay out of the sun. Pretty little fish, though. Look at this. If I can get it out with the ah, with the fly come out. Just a shot of your rod. Be good to hook this. Yeah, that is a pretty little fish. Just drop in. I watch the shadowing. Okay, three fish that quick. All right, Iron Mike's back up. There's one with a little more size. And gets it in the net. That one could fit a size 10 in its mouth. Got him with a size 10, white double trouble. Oh, nice little release. That's four fish that quick. Nice little pocket right over that rock that's sticking out there. Little soft spot. Oh, do you see that one? Take it. My goodness. Is that a good one? That's a good one. That's a solid fish, Andy. Get that sucker in a net. That's a fatty. That's a big one. That's a better one. That's a brookie there, buddy. Oh, man. That back, Eddie, I'm going to show you real quick. Right there. We had to come up above it and fish down into hey, it. While you guys are filming that, before it gets mudded up, I'm going to let another one stick on it. And Andy lands a pick of a brookie. Holy heck, look at that male. And the pink double trouble. What size is that double trouble? Uh, it's probably a size 12. Size I've seen fish 12. 10s, but... Uh, Thank you. We're getting Andy's off here. Iron Mike hooks one, and if he gets this one in, we're going to do a double release of two nice native brookies. Another good one in the net. Here's twice the size. Hold on, Cliss. Nice fish, guys. All right. That's a little better. What do you think about that? <sighs> You got a good one, another good one, Big Shrive. Wow, right after getting a big fish, he gets another one. I gotta come over, we have to take a look at that one. Big Shrive, we even got a little bit of sunshine for that release. <sighs> That's what I'm talking about. How the heck do we go from such little dinks to amazing looking big brookies? All within a matter of 10 minutes. Yeah, I like it though. Huh? That's right, Palomino King. Double, double, double. He tried with the double hooked. He gets one of the two in the net. And while well, he's taking that one off, Iron Mike's cast it in. Ooh, almost had two fish. Drive dropped her in. Not a bad one. Good, you got one hooked. Maybe might be a foul hook. Man, he's in the mouth. Yeah, that is a nice solid fish. Go right up above him, Andy. Try to pull one out. Let me come around here and. Get a look at this one. A right, six incher. Ooh, pretty little fish. Oh, Ooh, 
he went out of there fast. Yes, he did. <laughs> Another one of those spots we had to come around the log. Iron Mike dips the cast down in here, jigs it a little bit, and he has a. This is crazy how solid these fish are. At first, we were worried we had to leave this section, and everything changed within a matter of a fish. That fish, too. It is a solid fish. Look at that fish, and he has that big old size 10 white double trouble right in his mouth. Nice fish. That was a good one. That was. He was way back in there. I measured 0.2 miles to the bike. Good. We probably each caught 10 fish, right? Wasn't too bad. Pretty good fishing. Yeah, Andy had a double hook. Yeah. A couple in the, Andy got one around the nine inch range, several in the six or seven. It was good. Yeah. Good. You want to so head down lower? Sure. Why don't you guys go right? There's a run right there. I'll take the bike down, get the car, go close this section off of that run. Okay, let's do that. And then we're going to go try to catch some other fish, right? Yep. We're not done fishing yet. No, no. Okay. No, All right, as Iron Mike takes the bike back, he left us with a good spot to finish with the fish. Make sure I was going to try to pull one more out. And then we're going to go hit another section of water and hopefully we can get into some brown trout. You're going to get them up here, Big Shrive. Huh? You're going to get them up here. You got them, too. You hooked them. Iron Mike called the spot. Iron Mike, zooming past us. And Big Shrive gets them in the net. That's another pretty fish, buddy. Oh, it is. That is what we came for right there. No palominos today. Big Shrive's doing his other thing, brookie fishing. Oh man, it's time to go find some more fish, Big Shrive. I'm this is, it. darn right, this is how the opening day is supposed to be. Yeah. Family, friends, fun, food, kids catching fish, and the Lively Lakes crew out catching native brook trout. And now we're gonna try to get some wild browns. Let's do it. Fish up to the bike and ride it back. That's it. That is slicker than possum poop. 1,800 miles. Look at Iron Mike go. Man, that is funny. Here, it? it does look like a starting hole. Back on the water. Big Shrive ended the last spot. Iron Mike is up. Move down a uh, what? A couple miles? Location switch, a couple miles Got downstream. Water volume down here. I'm gonna first cast in the soft stuff right here. I did not get that. Get Iron Mike gets snagged up in this spot, heads out and gets out that snag. We're going to have to move upstream a little bit and try to land that first fish. Wow, uh, that was a little tap. I don't know if that was one or not. There we go. Feel like a good fish? Yeah, that first one probably was too. All right, so Iron Mike has one hook. And I don't, I can't see from here. What is it? Brook trout. Brook trout, another brookie. We we're hoping to find some brownies. Can't complain when you're catching some native brookies that size, though. No, that's a nice one. Oh, yeah, that's a real good fish. All right, so we continue to look for the elusive brown trout. What are you saying? What the world is that, Tribe? You tell me what that is. Is that a fish head? Looks like it's cut. I mean, that's why we're not getting as many fish down here. Wow. It is cut right off, isn't it? 
That's such a sea. I wonder where that came from. All right, trying to Brownie. film in Big Shrive working his way up the water. Iron Mike's just falling behind him. And we are gonna have, I'm not gonna jinx him, I'll wait till first brownie in the net. Let's go take a look. There we go. That's it. They are here. And look at that wild brownie with the white double trouble right in his mouth. Good looking fish. It's nice sure to see a wild brownie. Yeah. That's a good one. Mike is fishing his Reddington tilt. You're a real. That is his 10 foot two weight syndicate rod. Fishing his lather leg nymphs, his 30 foot, you have a 30 foot mono leader on? Yellow. 30 foot yellow mono leader and lather leg tippet. And that's getting the job done today. I'm about ready to say let's head back upstream. What do you got there, Big Shrive? I got the fatty for the original fatty right here. Hold on, what is that? Fatty 3.0 original smoked meat stick. 20 grams of protein. That's a healthy snack. It's not that good. I've had better meat sticks before. <laughs> not that good? <coughs> uh -uh. You got a little brook brook trout. Little Brookie, I'll tell you, our move has not worked out too well for us. We left some really good fishing and uh, it slowed down quite a bit. Nice little brook trout, so I don't know how many more fish we're gonna get, but guys are gonna keep fishing and we'll probably close her out soon. Big Shiraz headed to the truck. Let me give, him, yeah, I better give him the keys because last time he told me he'd knock my windows out if he didn't have them. He's headed to the truck. We're going to get a closing fish. I'll come up the road, too. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. Well, sometimes you roll the dice, you move, like we just did, and the Iron Mike's got a few fish. The fishing isn't the same down here, but it is what it is. We rolled the dice, and we're going to have to get back to camp, so... We're going to go ahead and end the fishing part right here and jump back in the truck and head back to camp and meet up with the guys and get something to eat. All right, we are back at camp. We're going to be pulling in here. This is the tricky part, Big Shrive. Back to camp. Let's see. Fire's going. The guys are getting some grub. Did you guys eat, Brent? No. <coughs> We're just starting. We're getting ready to cook this nice stock. <laughs> oh, there, there it is. All right, Brent just put the. These are pork steaks, right? Yes, sir. Pork, steak. pork steaks and pork chops. Because Big Drive wanted pork chops. Oh, jeez. Because I don't think he knew what a pork steak was. Listen, he's like a so little kid. Huh? This is Andy's side. This is the good guy side. <laughs> <laughs> Those look good though, look at that. <laughs> Back from fishing, out at the fire. Got the guys hanging out and we're cooking right on the fire. That's camp right there. Where's them shoes with them toe lights? <laughs> oh, I know. I, oh, you yeah, know, you had your cross. I broke the... them last year when oh, I got home, shoot. but I ordered new ones that are uh, aluminum. Shoot. They won't break us. He had Crocs last break. year with headlights. <laughs> Got a little angle on that thing. Yeah. You guys are out at the fire cooking the pork steaks. Big Shrive and Iron Mike are here at the table. And look at the amount of chips we have. <laughs> <laughs> how, many, how many bags of chips do you need? Peanuts, a chip? Buffalo, blue cheese. Twizzlers, Chex Mix. Ooh, we're going to get into those. those you know what I chips. brought? One thing of ham. That's what you brought, ham? Yeah. It just looked like chip ham. I don't know. What Did you bring was. bread? Yep. Bread and ham. That's what I bring every time. Nothing else. I did bring a variety bag of chips, I guess. More Look chips. Doritos. Waving potato chips. Combos. And we got the chips. We definitely 
definitely did not forget the chips. And then the pork steaks just came in. Brian just brought in the pork steaks and check those bad boys out. Man, we're gonna be pounding some food. Pop this bugger open. Here comes the guys with their feed bags. Woo! in here. Cheesy potatoes by Emily. That'll go with the pork steaks. You got that video rolling, Big Shrug? I do. We got Owen Sachs in here right now. And one thing we like to do, we like to rate chips. So we're gonna rate it by flavor and by the heat. Let's get that. I gotta get something in my mouth. That still has freaking disgusting. <laughs> it tastes, what are you thinking? Go eat that. What is it? Eat that still. Did you try that still? I don't like it. It tastes like you're. <laughs> like raw fish. All right. We're rating these chips out, and what yeah. are you giving them, heat wise? I'm gonna say the heat's probably like a two or three. Yeah, it says mild on it. But okay. Mild heat. Flavor. And it tastes like a, flavor's like a 10. I, you know what? I'm the same way on it. The heat's, I'm giving it about a three. Flavor of 10. That's good. Thanks for your rating. Yeah, thank we you. appreciate it. <laughs> That's official on the video. <laughs> Told you me never me. had a pork steak, got right? another chunk of land. Oh, Eat one. There's plenty of brodies. not going to eat a chunk of land in Ohio. There you go. That's a plate of grub. Look at Owen Pretty putting that thing down. <laughs> oh, heck yeah. See how good That's some food right out. there. Butter and will do it. <laughs> and I sleep in the seat, but I can put that seat back damn near laying down. I can stretch my feet all the way out, but if you wake up cold, hell, the starter's right there. Mm -hmm. Turn the heater on. Warm the truck back up. I do that once in a while. Really enjoy the adventure of staying in that truck. Yeah. It's like a fort for me, but I, I'm so secure. Yeah. You put that down. We weren't even a quarter mile no, into the trip. trip. <laughs> I flipped out. There was a, a rapid and it just sucked you in and you went or that brush and yeah and bridge right I was worried scared there. to death out of me with all that timber up against it going through them bridge areas with yeah, the kayaks. Yeah. So they leave water out the white water raft and we got down there and it was before daylight and we get our vehicles around and we start down remember we get down to where that island was supposed to be because we went down through there before no island. <laughs> we were like oh we were small yeah we didn't Remember, it got to be daylight, and we wanted to be that island for daylight. Right, was our goal, and then uh, there was no <laughs> island there. It was, it was ripping. We didn't fish. Remember that? We just kayaked to the end. It was, it was wicked. <laughs> Sunday morning, Camp Cook Brent back at it taking care of us. Get some bacon and sausage. Go ahead, you're going to talk about the pork chops. That grocery trip, Brent, all I did was push the buggy <laughs> in the door. Ben picked out all the groceries. He did everything? Yeah. Now, I will tell you, he did pick this sausage. I picked the pork chops. Okay. Bad. You know, the indicator was, but I didn't have, you're going to have to put a little weight on it. If I can get across, I'll definitely cross that walking bridge. Come down to real slow water, and then there's like a gas well, gas line. Yeah. That's a nice hole there, and you can fish it from this side. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's a fishable, I don't know. There's always a ton of fish in there. Mm -hmm. Little flipper is cheap. Uh-huh. Trying to splash the street. I did not film his setup. You gotta look at it. So Tiger Mike doesn't stay in camp. <laughs> you alright with this on video, Tiger? Yeah. <laughs> this is Tiger's look setup. Like, Hold look on. Much I, look how I can stretch out. Look at you. <laughs> I can stretch out all the way. <laughs> you can't. I thought you were full crap. Oh, look at that. Straight out here. Man, you're living large in this truck. Oh, I'll tell you, man, this was nice. Well, this was nice. Yeah. There's Tiger's little tiger up there. <laughs> yeah, that's what you named me, man. Oh, yes, for anybody that was wondering, camp is perfectly equipped with one of these. 
A lot of people don't understand a Northern PA camp outhouse is more than just a place to go to the bathroom. Rakes, there's fuel, usually a, an ax, a shovel, all kind of little things. Ladder, there's, it's like a little storage shed that also is a bathroom. I do like their calls. They you ever use them, Mike? No. Um, I like their um, frying pan. That's a good one. I remember it. They're doing well. It's yeah. good to see. Yeah, like Camp Dad taking care of us with the eggs. That's your new name, Camp Dad. Camp Dad. <laughs> You're earning that nickname. Breakfast every weekend, Brett. What's that up? What's that, Mike? Breakfast at home too. Just on Sundays usually. We got Camp Dad, and over here, Palomino King. <laughs> You're gonna get one Dad, this weekend. I find one, yeah. Good morning. Good morning, there he Good morning is. Tiger Mike. You guys uh, could have closed my door. You got the barn door open out there. <laughs> that was me. All the smoke. Just dump that grease on that tree. The trailer. trailer tire. I said, where'd you live? He goes, I have no idea. He goes, because oh, my truck was in town. I don't, who lived in town? We always parked at. <laughs> you ought to see that boys cutting that firewood. They cut all the firewood. Owns up on the roof, spraying it. And that's the next generation coming through for this camp. That chemical. All right, everybody's packing up and. Go get some more fish. Let's go. We're headed over to Brookie Stream on the way home. Stephen Camp heading over the mountain. Just have to stop and get a quick clip of this. Some of the views up here in northern PA are absolutely incredible. Them pines way down there. <laughs> and you might see the water. <laughs> oh, where we're fishing, huh, Shrav? Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. That's northern PA right there. The guys just dropped me off and I'm going to end the video with some self-filmed native brook trout fishing. The cameraman is going to get out in front of the camera and catch some of these beautiful northern Pennsylvania mountain gems. Right, just got the first one. It's a little dink. Caught it on the black blowtorch. But it's a beautiful little fish. Kind of like some of the ones the guys were catching yesterday. Nice little native brook trout. I think the release is going to be pretty good on him. Went under a little rock and maybe put on a little show. Who knows? But first one in the net, and let's hope we get a bigger one. There's a nice one. That's a chunker. So the first one I got on the black blowtorch, that little one, then this one's a little chunkier and it's on the pink double trouble. Big Shrav was slamming them on that fly yesterday, so I decided to put one on and great start to the end of the video. Just went to do a release on them. I always lay my net in the water to keep the fish in the water and zipped right out of my net right up the stream. So we're not gonna get a little underwater release, but there's plenty more to catch. Another nice looking fish. We'll see if we can get this one put in without him getting out of the net. Give you a quick look at him.
little buggers are tricky. I don't know how well that release is going to go. He just flopped out of my hand, but you hate to hold them tight and crush the fish, so you just hold them in your hand loosely, and sometimes they don't cooperate. That's three nice brookies, and that one there, see that fly right there? That is our pink double trouble, and that's the second one I got on the pink double trouble. Big shroud, big shroud. Thank you for bringing that fly to my attention yesterday. Another great looking little fish, gonna get him released in this little soft spot. Chunker. Holy crap, this is a beaut. Let me get the camera down here. You gotta see this one. Pink double trouble. This is a chunk. Fatty, fatty native rookie. Oh my. Chunk of the day for me. Look at that fish. That is a chunkster. That's what I'm after right there. I mean, I absolutely love catching them all, but that's my favorite fish in the world. A chunky, fat, native firebelly brookie. Let me get a release on him, underwater release. All right, we'll move the camera up here and I'm gonna let him go so he goes right back into the spot I got him from. Up there, there we go. Little chunk right there. Another jumbo in the net. Not quite as big, but I caught two smaller ones out of this spot. 
and then I throw up and I get a, another fat fish, another fatty. You see that great looking brookie right there? The first two I wasn't even bringing the camera over to. Beautiful little fish, but little ones. But uh, three fish in that spot, and there could be more. It's amazing. We came up to camp, it was high water. The big creeks were blown out, and they're fishable today, it's Sunday, but they were blown out for yesterday. We hit some of the smaller streams and pretty good fishing. Let me get this guy in the water. Just active little things, they're such beautiful fish. So a lot of these spots I have to stay low. And I keep the camera low, I don't want to spook any of these fish. And this spot's a prime example. If I stand tall in this spot, I'm not catching a fish. If I stay low, there's a little soft pocket across the stream. I'm going to catch a fish. Stay low like this. Kind of judge my distance. I should at least miss a fish here. And I didn't miss them. It did take a couple casts. These little pin casts, they can be tough. But uh, you just sit there and work them and work them and work them and stay low. And that one produced a nice dark little brookie. Got me all tangled up, but you can see he has that blowtorch right there in his mouth. Seems like the bigger ones are taking the double trouble. The smaller ones are all taking the black blowtorch. There he goes. Beautiful little fish. So yesterday, Big Shriver and I and Mike were using their 10-foot syndicate rods. I actually prefer a smaller rod on these streams. This is a eight-foot Reddington Classic Trout Rod. It's a four-weight. I prefer a three-weight. When I grabbed this rod out of the shop, we were down to one three-weight. This was a few years ago, and I didn't want to take the last three-weight, so I grabbed the four-weight, but I do prefer it a little bit lighter. It's working, and then the reel I'm using is the Reddington Zero and it's the 4.5. Now, if you would want a three weight, you're gonna wanna go with the next size down reel and it'll pair real nice with it. They're great for fishing these brookie streams and stream this size, I prefer an eight or an eight and a half foot rod. Now, if the stream's a little smaller than this and it's brushed in, I prefer a seven, seven and a half foot rod. Probably seven and a half I can still do. And um, the reason is, I just feel like I get into a lot of stuff whenever I have a longer rod. Now, Big Shrive and Iron Mike, they're excellent with the longer rods on these smaller streams, but I prefer just to have another rod and take a smaller rod out fishing, and that's what has been working really well for me. And you saw the flies. The first fly that's working great is the Double Trouble Pink, and really that's thanks to Big Shrive. He's brought me to use that one quite a bit. And then the other little fly that's working great is the Blowtorch in Black. We've done really well on our blowtorches lately, and this is the black. We've caught the wild browns with the natural. Uh, the olive has worked well. It's a great little fly and it complements a double trouble really well. This little soft spot on the other side of that run. It's another brook in the net. Just a nice little soft spot on the other side of the run. And this little guy took that pink double trouble. Slamming them. move away from that loud water and that little guy hit like a ton of ricks. I flung him in the air, didn't mean to, but sometimes that's what happens when you set a hook on these little guys and 
you can see he took the pink double trouble. Another beautiful little mountain gem. Nice little soft spot, I'll go get him released. And away he goes. Okay, there's a nicer one. Took the black glow torch. Is that black glow torch right in his mouth? Barbless fly pops right up. Let's go get a nice release on him. Beautiful little darker brookie. Well, I'm going to go ahead and end the video with that fish. I think we got about everything you can in on an opening weekend. Family, food, fun, friends, and of course fish. I'd like to thank everybody for following along. Be sure to check us out on all the social media out there. Check out our online website. That's our store, livelylegs.com. Thanks for tagging along, and until next time, best of luck on the water.